Hi, welcome to the Dynamic Duel Podcast, where we discuss all things DC and Marvel related, we review superhero films, and we debate who would win in Marvel vs. DC matchups. I'm Johnny DC. And I'm his twin brother, Marvelous Joe. Welcome to the main event of the year, probably. <laughs> so far. So far. So far in the podcast, this is definitely like our highest profile dual match episode. Wonder Woman vs. Thor, two A-listers. They both have movies coming out this year. It's going to be awesome. They're both mythological badasses. Right, right, right. And it, yeah, like I've always liked this matchup. A lot of people like to pit Superman against Thor. I've always preferred Wonder Woman just because they're like these two mythical weapon wielders. And like, it's always like, like if Mjolnir, M- uh, I was going to say Mjolnir. <laughs> yeah, that's how you used to pronounce it. If Mjolnir is like this unstoppable force, then, you know, Wonder Woman's bracelets are like this unbreakable object. So what happens? We're going to find out yeah. later on. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And the way we find out is similar to the old uh, Deadliest Warrior television show that was on Spike, Spike TV. TV. Yeah. We set, it's a probabilistic model, basically, called the Monte Carlo Method, where we set up a standard deviation among the character stats. Right. So that's how we decide things. It's science. It's science. It's not fan votes. No. No, no fan votes here. No opinions. <laughs> Your opinions are moot. <laughs> it's statistics. Yeah, so look forward to that later on in this episode. Right. Before that, we're going to get into the news. Some exciting news uh, broke these past few weeks. Uh, The biggest probably is Tom Hardy has signed on to play Eddie Brock in Sony's new Venom movie, which is huge. Great actor, great director. Looking forward to that. Um, Dwayne Johnson has made some comments about who he wants to fight in the DC Cinematic Universe and who he wants to play Shazam, which, like, comments... Actor comments aren't really news, but because it's Dwayne Johnson, it is news. <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, we're going to get into uh, the casting news around New Mutants. Uh, Anna Taylor-Joy and Maisie Williams have been cast, which, and I think it's just perfect casting. So I'm actually honestly excited for that. Um, and then we're going to get into some television trailers for The Gifted, for Black Lightning, and then wrap up the news section with Joseph's uh, thoughts on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4. Yeah, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had their season finale this past week, and uh, I don't want to get into spoiler territory or anything, but I want to talk about it just a little bit. Yeah. So uh, before we get into the news, though, as always, uh, let's get into our trivia question. Congratulations to Jules Finch, yeah. who correctly answered last week's trivia question. Yeah, this is his second time yeah, getting this is one his, correct. Yeah, um, so last week's or last episode's trivia question was, there are three film composers who are tied for scoring the most Marvel and DC superhero movies. Name those composers. And he correctly answered with Danny Elfman, who has c- composed six Marvel movies. Or, not Marvel movies, Marvel and They're DC Marvel, movies. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Batman, Batman Returns, Spider-Man, Hulk, Spider-Man 2, and Avengers Age of Ultron. So six. Uh, tying with him is John Ottman, who um, has scored X2, Fantastic Four, Superman Returns, Fantastic Four, Revenge, uh, Revenge, Rise of the Silver <laughs> Surfer, <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past, and X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> and uh, the last one, uh, you guys may already know, it's, it's Hans Zimmer, who uh, scored Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, Man of Steel, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and Batman vs. Superman. So right. they all scored six movies. Um, and Jules Finch got it right, so that means, Jules, you get a... No prize. No prize. A, yeah. a dynamic duel, no prize. Um, and it basically is just a, it's a, it's a drawing that Jonathan draws for you. Yeah, yeah. And it says no prize on it. It's basically the coolest <laughs> JPEG that anyone could ever bequeath to someone yes. else. <laughs> we posted on our, our social media channels, uh, including our Facebook and our Instagram and our Twitter. And you can find us there um, by searching for Dynamic Duel Podcast. Um, and you should be able to find us. Um, We're also on Facebook now. Yes, um, we're on Facebook. So that's, that's if you're on Facebook and we know you are, <laughs> we know we know you're don't out there, listener. Don't lie. Go go ahead and search for Dynamic Duel, um, DC vs Marvel, and yeah. you'll find us. Like our Twitter, we post news there like all the time. We, we post a constant barrage of news. Of news. Yeah. Um, so if you like news, then if you'll you, like us. If you like news about comic books and comic book movies, yeah. If you definitely, definitely like news, definitely like us. Then. S- still like us maybe you could just unfollow us i don't know if you just want to be cool if you are you, if you want to be cool go ahead you know if, if you don't want to be cool i guess don't but <laughs> but that's on you <laughs> um okay so this episode's trivia question um is 
it's, it's kind of like a history lesson. But um, in 1984, DC offered to sell Marvel the publishing rights to DC characters. What ultimately caused Marvel to back away from DC's deal? So again, so you submit your answer to, to our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or you can email us at dynamicdualpodcast at gmail.com. Right. A random person who gets the answer correct. Before the next episode. Before, before the next before episode. Before we release the next episode. Yeah. So as long as this is the latest episode, the one that you're listening to, this one, as long as it's the latest episode, you can still answer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, try to win that no prize. And uh, later on in this episode, we will be giving a hint for that question. Right. So stay tuned. Um, all right. Top of the list. Tom Hardy. Um, is Venom. Yeah, this was announced just yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Because we're recording on Saturday. Um, he is now Eddie Brock in the Sony Spider-Man spinoff uh, Venom movie. It's not going to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it... Uh, which sucks, if, but what is good is that uh, Ruben Fleischer, who directed Zombieland, it, that he was announced as the director. I really liked Zombieland. I'm Zom- not familiar with really any of his other work, but I liked Zombieland. Zombieland was a fantastic movie. Um, I think this is great news the in general. Like I was like I remember. We, okay, we've talked about this whole Sony Venom thing before, and each time we've talked about it, we've we've just talked about how it was a bad idea, the worst idea ever. I think I think though, actually, the last time we talked about it, we referenced the Logan movie and how Logan kind of stands apart in from continuity and it can can. It's like its own thing. It was allowed to be its own thing, basically. And at that point, I was like, well, maybe if the, if the Venom movie is at least good, I don't mind that it's not part of the cinematic universe. Um, that being said, if I had my way, I would still want it to be part of... Yeah, if I was Marvel right now, I'd be like, you seriously got Tom Hardy for this? Um, <laughs> let's rethink this. Because that is huge. Yes, I mean it, it might be. He's like, a fantastic actor. Yes, that if if they can make it really well done, you know, if if it's a great movie, I'd like to maybe maybe see them revisit the idea of of him joining the cinematic universe and meeting up with against Tom Holland Spider Man. Yeah, and why not? I mean, not that Suicide Squad is the the best example of this, but like there's there's precedence for kind of setting up villains in a movie beforehand before you you know, yeah. debut them in, in, a, in a larger universe, I guess. Right. Um, so I, I think, I think it could be done. And, and really, I think that's what they should consider doing. If Venom is a hit, why not connect it? Yeah. And Tom Hardy is a huge guy, you know, like he, he looks like Eddie Brock, you yeah. know, he could totally yeah. kick the shit out of Tom Holland. I forgot the name which of the, which is what you want Eddie Brock to look like, you know? Yeah. So I forget the name of the movie he was in. He played like this, um, like a prisoner, uh, it, it, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> like it, he was big in that movie. He was huge, okay. really big. Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, give uh, Tom Holland his Spider-Man like a, a trilogy. You know, by that point he'll be like in, in you know college age. Well, he already is kind of college age, but in in the film universe he'll be you know probably late college. He'll probably be getting his first job at the Daily Bugle. He'll meet. Tom Hardy there, who's already an established photographer, and that, you know, just set up that whole story. Yeah. I mean, you'll definitely have to deviate from the whole, you know, like, the symbiote originated on Peter Parker with the whole black suit, you know, Mm -hmm, uh, mm Spider-Man aspect. But, uh, I mean, that's... I I don't mind. There was a rumor that that Peter Parker was going to get the symbiote suit in Infinity War. When he goes off planet, oh, if he does, that would make so much sense because of what was it, Secret Wars? That was the yeah. first time he got that. Yes. So the, people had suspected that because during the interviews, like the the press um, promotional interviews, yeah, uh, Tom Holland was wearing a jacket over his costume. So they're like, what, "Why are they hiding the costume?" I don't have the answer for that, but some people had suspected that maybe it's because he was wearing the black suit, like a full length to the floor jacket. No, what but they, they, didn't, see his they, pants? Didn't, they didn't really show below the waist on the camera. So, oh. anyway, if I remember that correctly. Interesting. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that would be a great way to introduce it, but this is another okay way. Again, just, just bring it into the Marvel Universe because this the talent so far that has been announced for this film is too good to have it just stand alone forever, I think. I agree. 
Yeah, I mean, if you see a Venom movie, you're going to be like, oh, and, and, you know, if it's good, which I think it will be just because of the talent, then you're going to want it be, to be, able, you're going to want to see those characters interact. Yeah, it makes me think, if, if, if both Tom Holland and Ruben Fleischer signed on, it makes me think that the script is pretty good. You mean Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy, what did I say? Tom Holland. <laughs> Tom Holland. Tom Hardy. Um, and get, kudos to Tom Hardy. You get to play Bane and Venom? What a badass. Yeah. That's not fair. How, how is anyone I mean, supposed to compete? Venom's way better than Bane, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think uh, Ruben Fleischer brings to this job as a, the director of Zombieland? Um, I, I, I remember Zombieland having, like, just like, you know, an, uh, it was a comedy, but also had, you know, some scary moments. It had a good eerie atmosphere to yeah. it. Yeah, it lets us know that he'll be good with the horror elements of Venom. Yeah. Because Venom should be a scary scary figure, you know? Right, right. Um, I don't want to see too much humor in this, honestly. Yeah. I don't really see... I mean, when has Tom Hardy done humor? Has he... Never? Has he ever done humor? Think. No, he's very dramatic. Yeah. I mean, the next movie he's in is is what? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's the Christopher Nolan film, and the title escapes me now. Dunkirk? Yeah, he, Dunkirk. He's, he's in Dunkirk? Yeah, he's in Dunkirk. Oh, okay. I didn't so, know. I mean, he's, he's, he's a, like a legit, serious you know, dramatic actor. Yeah. So, and Fletcher will also bring the, the brutality of it kind of, because zombie land was, they had some brutal moments. It's, know, it's honestly violent. my favorite, like zombie film next to Shaun of the dead. Like my favorite Zani <laughs> properties are, are all uh, the funny ones. Comedies. <laughs> yeah. My and, favorite and even is Zack Snyder's, um, date was it day of the dead. Dawn of the dead. Dawn of the dead. That's my favorite zombie movie. That was a good one. It was Dawn of the dead. Uh, just because they ran in that one. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. The running ones are more scary. <laughs> So, uh, looking forward to it, I guess. Uh, we obviously won't get a trailer for like a long time because they just announced the casting. But the movie is supposed to come out. Uh, actually, they haven't re- no, they haven't released any date for release this. information. But if they're making announcements now, I expect this film to come out like late next year. Late next year, or maybe like early late summer next year. Nineteen. I, I imagine it's not going to be that big a budget of a film. No. Um, maybe. Yeah, I, I, it, probably sooner rather than later, if, do, if it doesn't have a big Do you think budget. it's going to be rated R? Zombieland was rated R. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I hope... Mm, honestly, I hope it's rated R. They might be going the Logan Deadpool route. Yeah, exactly. This. Yeah. This, this, yeah, Sony's going to experiment in the R-rated arena, essentially, I think. Yeah. Speculation. I hope, again, I hope it's rated R. I think it would be better that way. But still, bring it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who is the villain of a Venom movie? It would have to be Carnage. That would be totally rated R. Yes. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Carnage. Make him the it's villain. It's not like he could do Spider-Man. Make it totally rated R. And then bring Venom into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Get, like, really gory. Against, like, you know, like, little squeaky Tom Holland and just see how those two personalities kind of clash. If it is rated R, do you think you could still have it be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I think you can. I mean, you'll have to tone him down a little bit when he does go into those movies. But if if Venom is a Venom's less violent than Carnage. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you could do it. I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to say I want it to be rated R. But if it's going to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe... And a rated R or an R rating would would hinder that. I don't want it to be rated R. I think it'll be fine. I think he, like for for example, I think you could put Deadpool in the PG thirteen X Men universe. I think you could do that. I don't think Deadpool has to just be re- relegated to R rated films. That's true. There's a way to make it work. You just gotta bleep him, bleep, <laughs> bleep his cuss words, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe X Force when they when they get around to that. I I would I would be surprised if that was rated R. Yeah, me too. I think, and, 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 and Wolverine kind of proved how you could do, have this violent character and, and tone him down for PG-13. You know? Yeah, so. yeah, true. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for that news. Yeah. Um, next up, Dwayne Johnson has said he wants Arnie Hammer to play Shazam. And he didn't actually, like, literally explicitly say Arnie Hammer. He said the Lone Ranger. Yeah, he, he's doing he's doing good, uh, press right now for, for uh, Baywatch. Baywatch. And... Uh, you know, he said, I'm not, he doesn't want to say specifically who he wants, but he's just going to say one, two words, Lone Ranger, which is Arnie Hammer. Yeah. Which Arnie Hammer has been rumored to be part of the DCEU for like a long time now. And people have always been, you know, uh, suspecting that he's, he's playing Cal Jordan. But, you know, if, if Dwayne Johnson is saying this, I almost wonder if like Arnie Hammer was cast a while ago as Shazam. And they just haven't released the news yet. Because there have been too many rumors for that to be a coincidence. 
I mean, they've uh, they've definitely met. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, they, well, they de- definitely met, and that's how he got that inclination toward Arnie Hammer. You think that apparently he's a big guy? Yeah, yeah, huge. You, you, I mean, you think that by now they would have, you know, at least auditioned for Shazam, you know. And I think whoever they're going to audition for Shazam is Dwayne Johnson is probably going to be involved in the audition process. Well, why would they audition for Shazam so soon when a Shazam movie isn't even supposed to come out until after a Black Adam movie, which is still dumb in my mind. I don't know, just, you know, forward thinking, hopefully. I mean, how you, you think of someone like like Amber Heard who has had the Mara role for like years already. And same thing with Jason Momoa before that. Like they cast these things pretty early. Yeah. I guess maybe, you know, as they're building up the universe, they're just trying to plan ahead. Because Dwayne Johnson in these interviews has also said, like, he has, you know, there's something secret that he's, like, really excited about how they're going to, like, introduce or when he's going to appear in the cinematic universe. Um, which do also you, makes me wonder if he's going to appear in, like, Justice League, like, in a credits, end of credits scene or something like that. Do you that. think it's possible that he could even show up in Wonder Woman? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean... <laughs> The character has Egyptian roots, and that's not too far off from where the Mascara is supposed to be, like in the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, like Patty Jenkins has said, that's that's where Hertha Mascara is. Good. Um, uh, I think um, it make it, it would make sense. Like a surprise sense. after credit scene or something. Yeah. When the movie is released, did did BBS have an after credit scene? No, their after credit scene was actually the Jesse Eisenberg uh, communing with Steppenwolf. Oh, okay. And Warner Brothers was like, "Oh, we're DC. We don't do after credit scenes. We just release scenes after the movie." But it was like, huh. people were confused as to whether or not it was now like officially continuity, and I'm still kind of confused. I mean, it was in the ultimate or uh, edition of the film, yep. but uh, yep. I mean, how many people have seen that? So. Um, I, I don't know h- how I feel about Arnie Hammer as Shazam because like Shazam is supposed to be like childlike. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen Arnie Hammer like be like really like, I don't know, act playful? like a kid, act like a kid, I yeah. guess. You know who I always wanted to see? Uh, I think I've, I've mentioned this a few times, Joe Manganiello, but he's going to be Deathstroke. So, well, who knows if he's still going to, he doesn't know if he's still going to be Deathstroke. Honestly, he said oh. that in, in interviews. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, now that uh, Matt Reeves has, has taken over. So. I, I'd rather have Joe Manganiello as Shazam and uh, Arnie Hammer as Hal Jordan, I think. Um, yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't mind Arnie Hammer as, as Hal Jordan. Um, honestly, I would probably prefer him as Hal Jordan than Shazam. But, I mean, if who am I to argue with The Rock? You know, he would just <laughs> kick my ass if I tried. <laughs> so um, if if it happens, I'm I'm not going to complain. I, I I think I think uh, it, it'll be good. Do you think he'll keep his brown slash blondish hair for the role, so that way he's not compared to Superman too much? That's if a good question. Shazam? I could see them going with that rationality. Honestly, um, that that would make sense. I think. I don't know why hair plays such a big deal for me in the casting of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, uh, I also learned, just like uh, when I was reading up on this, that I guess they orish- originally offered the role of Shazam to Dwayne Johnson. Well, he should have taken it. He would be perfect for that. Well, he turned him down. Why? Because he was more interested in Black Adam. Why? <laughs> because he played the Scorpion King, and he was like, this character is like the Scorpion King. I don't know. He would have made a great Shazam, honestly. Um, it's, I don't know. He didn't want to do it. Or what can you do? Just play both roles. I don't know. Um, so he, he also did confirm that Black Adam and Superman are going to fight on Yeah, screen. apparently they've had discussions about that, which, cool. Yeah. I mean, and it's the same thing as Zod. I don't like it. What? The only difference uh, between Black Adam and Zod is that Black Adam can shoot lightning. How are you, how are you, it's going to feel so much like the Superman-Zod fight, I think. Um, yeah, it's probably going to look like that. He wears an all-black suit and everything, too. It's just... Except, you know, there's a, a bigger political element in it because he's the ruler of a nation, you know, Black Adam is. Is that the route that they're going to go with this, though? I imagine. Hmm. I would be surprised if they didn't. I think that's the whole point of him having his own movie is to establish, like, you know... And if you do that, how are you going to make your Shazam versus Black Adam, your Shazam movie, where he fights against Black Adam, how are you going to make that appealing when basically you've already seen it in the Superman Black Adam fight. 
Aha, uh-huh, I gotcha. I think it's still going to be appealing. I think anytime you see these these huge characters, superpowered characters clash, it's it's going to be entertaining. I, just, I, I don't like the idea of, you know, you, you had the Superman Zod fight, now you're going to have Superman Black Adam fight, which is going to be similar to the Superman Zod fight, and then you're going to have the Shazam Black Adam fight, which is going to be similar to the Superman Black Adam fight, which is similar to the Superman Zod fight. <laughs> It's it's going to be all very similar, I believe. So I, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sure, rather, I'm sure they'll find new ways to do it. We'll see. We'll see. They always do. I mean, the, Hollywood is constantly trying to one-up itself in terms of action and spectacle and what you can show on screen. Constantly getting better at it. I mean... I guess so, man. You don't think so? I guess. <laughs> and then I see movies like Green Lantern or whatever, you know? Whatever. <laughs> all right. Is that it for that news? Um... Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not sure where Black Adam is going to appear. It could be Wonder Woman. It could be Justice League. I'm not sure where Superman is going to appear with Black Adam. Could be the Black Adam movie. Maybe they or they're waiting for Superman to debut in the Shazam movie because they had that cartoon. Um, it was like DC Showcase where uh, where uh, Billy. It was like the origin story for Billy Batson, but Superman was involved. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Superman also fought Black Adam and the actually the Tim Miller directed um, like opening segment for the DC Universe online multiplayer game. Um, they fought and that was cool. So I want to see it. Unlike you, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm excited to see it. I can't wait to see it. It's because you'll just take anything that DC will throw at you. I, I'll take anything um, I can get. I, ju- I just uh, remembered Venom does have a release date. It's October 5th, 2018. So, oh. so yeah, next year, end of next year. I didn't know that. Yeah, right, like kind of Halloween. before Halloween. So make it's a Halloween it, film. Yeah, make, make it, it horror. horrifying, please. Yes, that'd be cool. All right, um, New Mutants. So th- this uh, New Mutants movie has been we've been talking about it for a while now. Um, it's supposed to come out April of next year. In the last episode, we we announced that that release date, and we were like, they haven't announced they haven't announced a cast for this yet. Um, and we're like, well, they, they better do that soon. Long rumored to be playing Magic and Wolfsbane um, were, were Anya Taylor-Joy, who was in Split. And she was in, uh, oh, God, what was that other movie I saw her in? The, oh, The Witch. 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 V- yeah. The Witch is what I call it. <laughs> um, she was great in both of those films. I'm afraid to see The Witch. It's not that scary. I, I don't know. I mean, I remember seeing The Exorcist. And it's disturbing, but I want to say it's scary. Yeah, I don't like I don't like disturbing. I almost I prefer like scary it. to disturbing. Yeah, yeah. But she she was she was great in that film. Though I think that was her debut role, but she was fantastic. She's yeah. she's, she's like gonna be one of those stars sure. that wins an Oscar young, kind of like Emma Stone or Jennifer Lawrence. I bet on that. Um, Maisie Williams, who people may know from Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, she plays one of the Starks. I think. Yeah, I don't know which one. I don't watch. Game of Thrones. She's she's a good actress. Yeah, this is this is exciting. She's an actress who like isn't afraid to, I think like get down and dirty. She has you know like a lot of fight scenes, and I I I think like she's not afraid to like go full makeup. Yeah, with with Wolfsbane and which is what you'll have to do. Yeah, right, and not get like. I think other actresses would be like, oh, no, don't cover my face. <laughs> but I, I think she's willing to go all in, which that's, which is good. That's commendable. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, she's, she's a cute actress and everything. But, yeah, the fact that she's, well, I guess, quote, ugly it up, um, I think is commendable. Because yeah. you don't see a lot of young actresses wanting to do that. Yeah. And yeah. she, you know, she, she, she would make the perfect Will Smith. She looks a lot like the character. She's feisty. Feisty. Her character is super feisty. <laughs> yeah. In in Game of Thrones, and uh, Anya Taylor Joy. I mean, I the first movie I saw her in was Split. The only movie I've seen her in is Split. But she was so good in that movie. Um, she just has a really unique look to her. Like I could totally see her like playing just this magical character. Not that uh, she's magic is a mutant, right? She's a mutant. Yes. But she has like. But she's the ruler of limbo. Um, and she's Colossus's sister. Right. Uh, she has this magic sword that uh, is like super big. Like think like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, big mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in some representations. It would be cool to see her wield that. Um, I wonder if Colossus is going to make an appearance in this film. And if I, and if he I does, so. is it going to be the one from Deadpool or the other? It one? better be the one. From yeah, I don't want a different Colossus. No. I want that Colossus. Yeah. Um, 
and you know it would make sense that that he would be in this film just because of their relationship i mean if they didn't do that i'd be like where the f was colossus yeah i mean even with the cameo i think last episode we said that the movie doesn't have a director but well i was mistaken then as well apparently i don't know anything but <laughs> josh uh, a guy named josh boone is actually directing this film he's the he directed uh some kind of romance movies basically uh, he directed the fault in our stars which i did not see oh i saw that you saw that movie? Yeah. My wife was watching it, and I was like okay. on the computer. Okay. I wasn't really watching it, but uh, then I started to watch it. I don't know. Was it good? Uh, no, I didn't really care for it. Really? So, like, he's never directed action movies is, is the thing. So I'm wondering if, if uh, you know, this will be his first foray into action, which is fine, because, you know, like the Russo brothers didn't do action before they did Winter Soldier, and they did fantastic. So I'm not judging his previous work on, on how this movie will turn out, but it makes me well, think that he's definitely going to nail, like, the more emotional... Um, uh, I want to say young adult, but I feel like I use that term too much. Um, what am I trying to say? I don't know. I don't know. The young gonna, adult aspect of this film. Well, I, I was going to say, I mean, you take a look at uh, Patty Jenkins. You know, she didn't really do action. You know, she did Monster. Yeah, but we still don't know how Wonder Woman's action is going to turn out. So. It's going to be fantastic. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> you can't quite use that comparison yet. So. The Twitter reactions are... Off the hook. Hey, manage your <laughs> no. expectations. No. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about New Mutants. I'm looking forward to it. I got really excited by this casting, honestly, because it is the perfect casting. And, you know, it's the casting that has been rumored for, for a long time. For yeah. So a it's, year, it's almost, I think. You almost feel like validated. It's like, yes. yes, I knew it. It's like the actors I specifically wanted for these roles have been cast. This is a great Which week cool. for, for uh, Marvel casting with, with Tom Hardy and now these two. Yeah. Or a couple yeah. weeks, I should say. So, go Marvel. Um, all right. Uh, moving on to... Speaking of X-Men news, related yeah. news. The, the Gifted. That was a better segue. <laughs> <laughs> the Gifted uh, trailer came out. Um, it's going to be on Fox. Uh, there are quite a few mutants that we know from the X-Men universe that are going to be in this film. Um, and it looks interesting. I won't say it looks... I'm not as impressed by this trailer as I was by the trailer for Legion. And honestly, I gotta say, I don't think this will be as good. Of course, you know that I loved Legion. I gave it five stars, our very first five-star review. Yeah. But this one looks just a little bit more generic, I think. I'm not... The acting doesn't really sell me. No, it doesn't. Um... So basically, it's the story of the, it looks like this government official who rounds up mutants. Um, he it turns out that his two high school age kids are mutants, and now they're being hunted by the government and they're on the run. It's very much like Heroes. Did you ever watch that show? I never watched Heroes. So there was a character called the man with horn rimmed glasses or something like that. Uh huh. But he was a government entity who like rounded up people with special abilities, and then his daughter ended up. Uh, she was the the cheerleader character who, who was oh, like okay. indestructible. Yeah. Um. This reminded me a, just like from a story like premise exactly of that, and I was really? like, "This is heroes. <laughs> Come on." Yeah. But maybe that's why like this got the green light because they figured, I don't know. It, it's it's like heroes, but it's set in the X Men universe, which everybody loves. Well, I, I think like one of the more more interesting aspects of especially like in in X Men Two was you know like sitting down with the family and you know. It's, it's the persecution that they they faced. You know, it's, it's there there. There's a lot of um, connections to be made to you know like persecution that people face today. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I think I think the the concept is going to sell. I don't know if the actors are going to sell it though. Yeah, I think the the two kid actors are. I'm not entirely convinced yet. I mean, we've only seen snippets of their acting. Right. But. Uh, it's a little... And then even, like, weird. when I was watching it, it seems like like everyone has the same power. There's, like, four versions of the same power. Telekinesis? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you, we see we do see Lord, Lorna Dane, who is the Polaris, the daughter of Magneto. She has magnetism powers just like him. She's, like, stopping bullets and stuff. Yeah, she's stopping bullets. She's slamming, you know, officers against the walls and stuff. It looks like telekinesis, though. And then you see this daughter, this girl, and she's able to, like move a bag of chips out of a vending machine with her mind. <laughs> but she's also able to create force fields? No, well, she's able to, like, it looks like she's able to c compress water and air molecules. Okay, like. okay. Which manifests in the form of telekinesis, kind of. Yeah, these are, 
These are our original characters. Like, why not? Well, the two young ones are, yeah. Dumb. And the, the, the young boy, he has this, like, freak-out mode where he, like, it looks like telekinesis again. He's, like, he's bending like metal. Bending metal it, and the walls and everything. Yeah, it's like Magneto, like, the first scene in, in the first X-Men movie where you see Magneto, like, bend the metal fence, you know? Yeah. Except this kid bends showers. Well, he also tore apart what I think are Sentinels. Yeah, like spider and, Sentinels. Now, I heard that Sentinels were going to be in the show, which got me really excited because I thought it was going to be like an upgraded version of the Sentinels that we saw um, from Days of Future Past. And those were so cool. Yes. Those were the Sentinels I always wanted yeah. to see. These Sentinels look more like the the robots from The Matrix combined with Minority the robots Report from too. Minority Report. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that this show takes place... If we're talking like timeline wise, because they said that this does take place in the X Men timeline, main universe. Um, my, a, as you know, when we reviewed the Logan film, my hypothesis is that the original three X Men films and all the Wolverine films take place in one X Men timeline, and First Class, Apoc- uh, Apocalypse, and Days of Future Past take place in a separate X Men timeline. So the question is, which timeline? Assuming that's true. Mm-hmm. Which timeline does this this gifted show take place in? Well, I mean, that's not, that hasn't that's your theory. The no one's like explicitly said that if it all is all one timeline, this probably takes place well after the last stand, after uh, after the last stand, like before Logan. Somewhere in there is yeah. what I would guess. That's that's what this feels like. So to the me. same time as the Wolverine film, and in that timeline, we did we haven't seen sentinels yet we've only seen them like in a danger right. room exercise right so that's right in x-men 3 yes the last, yes okay yeah um the, the other sentinels were part of what i call the other timeline the first class timeline right so um I'm it's kinda, disappointing not to see the big tall humanoid robots i think the, when you think of sentinels you want to see those sentinels yeah. it's an interesting take but it's not what I want to see, I guess. And if if, if they were going to upgrade the Sentinels, like, I mean, and they've done that in the comics, I would have rather seen, like, those versions. Yeah. You know? I, th- this is foreign to me. I don't, I mean, it, it's not what I think of as a Sentinel. Yeah. It's, it looks cool, I guess. Does it, it also reminds me of, like, the Phantom Menace, those droid bots. Oh, yeah. They just, like, roll around. Yeah, kind of how, th- how they rolled. Yeah. Um... I, I, anything spidery kind of freaks me out. So, I mean, I, in, in that regard, I guess they're successful because they're probably meant to freak you out. Just yeah. like anything like a face hugger or I, I, I don't know. I just I don't like it. And so when they're rolling, it's like, Ugh. but uh, again, I, I don't want to call them sentinels. I don't want to do it, yeah. even though they are, I'm sure. In terms of other popular mutants that we see uh, in it, in, in addition to polaris it looks like we see blink um yeah she's rumored to be in the show yeah and uh, it's a different actress that's why i still think this is you know that first timeline Mm -hmm. because we haven't seen blink Blink in the original x-men timeline yet um she creates a portal that we see it looks very similar to the one that was used in days of future past though um so i I was the the portal action that was a days of future past were one of the best aspects of that film i think so it would be exciting if they can totally reminded me of the video game and i love the video games (laughs) um i think we see thunderbird i think that's thunderbird oh is that who he is kind of a native american looking uh mutant that might be him um although i haven't heard any confirmation or at least yeah why not? They haven't used him before. Yeah, get some get some some known names in there. Yeah, there's another guy who's like we don't even know if the X Men or the Brotherhood still exist. Right. Um, he's looks to be a mutant, but I don't know who he is, and no. I couldn't venture a guess either because no. uh, just you know right offhand he doesn't he's not wearing a costume or it seem, anything. It so. seems like he wants to know about Polaris though, because the dad is like I'll tell you everything I know about. What is her name? Yeah. Lorna. Lorna. You just need to make and sure my family's Havoc safe. And or Lorna like used to be a couple. But I don't think he would be Alex. No, Summers. I don't think he, no, because they just got done killing Havoc in the movie timeline. Yeah, in, in Apocalypse. So um, the music for the trailer was pretty somber. It looks like it's very much trying to take itself seriously. Uh, I just don't know how seriously I can take it. <laughs> There's parts to this that honestly look like the old Mutant X TV show. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Parts parts of this remind me of that. So. 
Just like with people like looking angry and using their powers, like throwing their hands out and like a beam shoots out. And they're like, yeah, I'm a superhero. And the director's like, all right, just make it look like you're trying to take a huge shit, <laughs> a huge painful shit. Go. And that's the face that mutants make <laughs> when they rip apart sentinels. And... <sighs> we'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I do like the actor that's playing the dad. Uh, I forget what else I've seen him in, but he, he's a popular TV actor and he, he's, he looks good in this. Yeah. But it, Fox's uh, Gotham show was renewed for another season, so now they're going to have a Marvel and a DC show. Well, if Gotham network. can get renewed for its like fourth season, whatever, yeah, then this show should be fine, I think, because I think it looks better than Gotham. Well, I mean, I I, I hate, I, I kind of always I feel bad like later on at the end of the year when we do like our our uh, brothers award episode, like I don't Gotham is still on, so it must not be terrible, and I'm not watching it. So, like, how can I make any kind of award for best DC show when I'm not watching all the DC shows? And even right now, with just, like, the four that I am watching, it's so hard to, <laughs> to watch all of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, Legends of Tomorrow is over. But, you know, I don't envy you that you have yet another show to watch because I know how hard it is. Yeah, I didn't actually even think about that. <laughs> when, this is coming out in the fall? Yeah. So be, yeah. Well, luckily, uh, I know Agents of Shield got pushed back to uh, next year. Next year, yeah. Inhumans is gonna is gonna take over its slot for the the fall fall season, but it's only eight episodes. So um, they're gonna introduce the next season of Agents of Shield during that like what would be the mid season break, right? Of Agents of Shield, so right. Uh, I'll have a little bit of a reprieve, although I'll be watching Inhumans. So no, I won't. So never mind. <laughs> A lot of TV watching. Yeah, it's hard. It's for a good cause, though, so I don't mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, so speaking of new shows to watch, Black Lightning. Um, and I'm not sure if it's debuting this year, in the fall, because I, I looked at CW's lineup. It, and it Black, is. It is. Black yes. Lightning wasn't on that lineup, though. Well, I read it on Entertainment Weekly. It's coming out this fall. Okay. I didn't see it on the lineup, but I guess it is. It is. So, yeah, I guess I have to watch it. Um and Are you, you don't sound excited. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, it doesn't. It, I heard it's not part of like the Arrowverse. No, but neither was Supergirl okay. when it first came out. So I'm sure they'll find a way to make the Flash have a cameo. It's like, oh, another one of the, you know, the multiverse worlds, you know. Um, so I don't. I didn't, I didn't like it. You I didn't, didn't like the trailer. Honestly, It reminded me a little bit of uh, Luke Cage with the music. Yeah, I, I like think that. maybe they were trying to go that direction, but I don't know if it was just like the narration. The narration kind of really threw me off. She, whoever's narrating, I'm sure, assuming it's one of Jefferson Pierce's daughters. Uh, she has a southern accent, but she's the only one who does. Um, so she's like Black Lightning, and then everyone else, you know, doesn't have that southern accent. Um, I, I, I just. I don't know. There's so a disconnect. Is there. it hard to place the geography of the show? Is that what you're complaining about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where it takes place. The 100 Gang. It looks like it takes place like in California, maybe, or maybe like New York, uh, but I can't tell. Yeah, we we talked a little bit about, about Black Lightning when they released the promotional image right. for this show, and, and then you had mentioned <laughs> that he has uh, his original powers were it was like a magnetic. Electrical electromagnetic force fields that would repel bullets. Yeah, from and his belt. Like, and then it kind of like he absorbed the electric powers. Of yeah, it. He, he internalized that like electric power, and then he became like you know able to turn into electricity and shoot electricity and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I have to say that the costume looks a lot better uh, in stills than it does in action. You think? I, I thought the costume was fine. I like how it lights up. It seemed kind of cheap looking to me he has two costumes in this trailer he had the one from 2005 and then the one that he has now and he didn't really age that much i noticed <laughs> like the, he grew a beard and that's it the one in 2005 the costume in 2005 looked less techy yeah 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 um the one he has now it makes me wonder like d does he have those powers or does he get the does I'm, he shoot electricity from his suit so i'm wondering the same thing because He's not a tech... I mean, other he had the tech belt, so I guess he started off as, like, a tech superhero. Uh, but once he internalized those powers, like, he became a metahuman. And it kind of seems like he's going, like, full tech. Which, like, why? 
Because what? in the flashback, like, you see him, like, standing, I'm not sure where he is, like, in this hallway, when there's, like, lightning all around him, and he seemed, like, to be more powerful, like, back then than he does now with his new suit, because, you know, he's doing martial arts, and the action looks pretty good. Yeah. But why would you do martial arts if you shoot lightning bolts? <laughs> I don't uh, see that was another disconnect for me. I was like, no, dude, you're doing it wrong. Just, just zap him. Just zap him. You're black lightning. You're black lightning. Zap him. And it makes it like so. He has a lot of tech on his suit. We're questioning why because it looks like his daughters are are metahumans. They yeah. his daughters have powers. They, right. They're manifesting these powers. We see a little hint of it, but they don't have any technology on them. No. So why yeah. the tech on this? Right. Suit, then? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um. Honestly, I think the tech is just going to be used as a way to m- make the character less powerful. Like, if his tech get, get, gets damaged, oh, you know, now he's in a situation where he has to find his way out without using relying on his his pe- tech powers. It, or, like in, in, like, in the sense where, like, he needs to recharge. It's like, oh, I can't use my powers right now because my, my tech is drained of, of power or something like that, you know? It's just, I, I don't want to see that. I just want, I want to see the Black Lightning I know. Yeah, you know, and from the comics, just it almost being seems cool. like in the old in the flashback and from two thousand five, it seemed like he didn't have a lot of tech on his suit, so it was a natural innate uh, electricity controlling power. Yeah, and then maybe he gets hurt and loses the power because we see him like like bleeding, bleeding in the in bathtub. The tub, and yeah. honestly, that scene of him in the bathtub, like full of blood, I was like, oh shit, did he slit his wrists in the bathtub or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> It was like I was like, this is dark. I thought the same thing. I thought he was Actually. trying to commit suicide or something like yeah. that. But it turns out he, he was just shot. He was shot. Yeah. yeah. And so they make him, or his wife makes him quit being a superhero. Yeah. And then in 2015, the whole premise is that he comes back. Right. So to protect his daughters. Yes. So, but you're gonna watch it. You're gonna give yeah. it a shot. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. I gave Powerless a shot. I, I watched all of those episodes on actually. Yeah. Um. I, I can't say I'm surprised that show got canceled. I'm kind of sad they didn't air the last two episodes. They probably will when it you know goes to streaming or whatever. Oh, or so, when I mean, it comes out on DVD. It's already on streaming on Hulu. Oh. Well, I mean, like like did you, like iTunes kind of? Amazon oh. kind of streaming? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. So, all right. Um, and to wrap up the TV news, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had its season finale. Uh, yeah. This is by far the best season of Agents of Shield. Like, oh, that's good to hear. Uh, by far, like I, I think the first season was it had really horrible episodes, but it got pretty good at the end of that first season. So I gave it three stars, which means it was just okay. Like five stars means I loved it. Four stars means I liked it. Three stars means I thought it was okay. Two stars means I disliked it. One star means I hated it. So right. three stars thought it was okay. Um, second season and third season I thought were both a little bit better than okay. Uh, I give them three and a half stars, but this season I'm giving four stars. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, I think it was a four star season. So you like you liked it as much as Guardians of the Galaxy, or yes, you know anything else we've given four stars? Ant Man. I, I I think for if you compare what it is to compared to what it could be, I think that yeah, this is comparable to those movies, Agents of Shield. Um, I think the main difference that happened this season was that they compartmentalized. The, the whole season into three separate story arcs. Oh, so, that's right. I started off with Ghost Rider. Yes. Right? When you do that, you don't have any you don't have any filler episodes. It was like three seasons in one, basically. So that's a good approach. Yes. Like what's annoying about like the last seasons is that you know you would have good episodes, but you ha- would have to work your way toward them. You know, you would have like these filler episodes that weren't quite as exciting. Um, yeah. But with this one, there was n- there were no wasted episodes. Not a single wasted episode of this whole season. Because of the three smaller uh, stories that were going on, the first story being Ghost Rider, and that's where they uh, they they find the dark hold, and uh, Ghost Rider's uncle is trying to use it for nefarious purposes. In the in the second part of the season, that was all about LMDs, and for me personally, I thought that was the best uh, the best arc. Life model decoys. Yeah, the life model decoys, which is a, a popular um, component of like the, the front of Shield. The Shield comics. Uh-huh. Um, were, were these Isn't life- Coulson an LMD? No, he's not. I thought because he died in in the Avengers movie. No, he died in the Avengers movie, but they brought him back to life using um, science and Cree blood and stuff. 
They hmm. they they managed to put him in stasis and and basically brought him back to life by opening up his brain and tinkering with it and inj- infusing him with Kree blood and things like that. Huh. But that all that stuff that chemical was destroyed, so you can't ever do that again. No, of course. So anyway, so he's not an LMD, but. The LMD season, it was like it was like the 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 themes of like Blade Runner with like the tension of uh, Ex Machina. Um, it was really well done. You it, didn't know who was real. And who exactly. Was fake. Yes, it, it it played mind games with you. It was really twisted, um, and really exciting and kind of at parts like nerve wracking. Wasn't the third part Hydra? The the third part was basically they go into the Matrix. Um, what? Yeah. So it's called, they call it the framework. And, uh, it was, it was set up as a virtual reality by one of the, the original LMD. Her name is Ada and she set it up. Um, and they, she traps them inside of it. And she, in, in that reality, she is Madam Hydra. And in that reality, they are all agents of Hydra as opposed to agents of shield. Uh-huh. And, but only Daisy and Simmons know the truth, and so they try to get everybody out of the Matrix, basically. Hmm. Um, but the the whole framework is created using. The, do you know what the Darkhold is? No. I mentioned the Darkhold earlier. It's a, it's a it's a book of black magic in the Marvel universe. Hmm. Um, it was in possession by Johnny Blaze in Agent the Agents of Shield show. It was in his basement. Johnny Blaze or J- uh, Johnny Blaze Reyes? Uh, what's his name? Johnny Blaze because he, because he had his carnival poster up in the basement. So that's where they find the dark hold. It's ba- so. Have you ever heard of the Vashanti in the Doctor Strange? Yeah. Comic? So yeah. like by the by the Vashanti, they're like these these uh, magical deities basically. And they the the book of the Vashanti is like the book of good magic, um, and the the dark hold is like the book of black magic. And no matter how good your intentions are, you can't use the the magic that's in that book for good purposes. Well, it's it, like the ring from the Lord of the Rings. Yes, exactly. Yeah, everything always ends up turning bad. So that's kind of what happened with this. Like, uh, Ada was mad of Hydra. She turned bad. And then uh, she ended up using the Dark Cult to create herself a real body to become a real person as opposed to an a- be an android. And they fight, like Ghost Rider fights her and everything. It's He comes back at the end of the season. It was a really well done season. I really hope they take this approach in uh, future seasons because, again, those filler episodes are, they can kill a a show almost. Yeah. If you you don't have enough to do. That's what I really liked about, like, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I think I gave that, like, four stars or four and a half. Um, I think it was four stars. Uh, It's a shorter season, so there's no filler episodes. Whereas, like, shows like, you know, like Iron Fist definitely had filler, you know? So yeah, you're right. I definitely see how, and it's almost like uh, like the comic, the way you're describing it. You know, it's it's serialized. Yes, and it doesn't necessarily need to be serialized by an, the entire length of a season. Yes, and and this is somewhat of a spoiler, but it's, it doesn't have any bearing on the plot for the season. But at the end of the fourth season, they end up in space. Oh, uh, and it makes me think that for the next season they're going to be in space, and uh, they're they're going to be working with sword. Do you know who Sword is in the comics? It's a, it's an acronym. It's an it's an offshoot of Shield, uh-huh. and it's basically like Shield in space, like the the Shield the the alien division of Shield. Uh-huh. Um, it stands for sen, sen, <laughs> sentient sentient world. Uh, oh, observation and response. Sentient world observation and response department. Didn't Joss Whedon create that? Yes, he did. Um. So that's pretty cool because Jed Weed and his brother is running the show. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it was rumored that maybe Sword, the rights to Sword belong to Fox, but this is a TV show, so I don't think those rules apply. I would I, I would almost bet pay folding money that this is going to be Sword um, because they're in space. So what does S.H.I.E.L.D. stand for again? Can you Do you know? Strategic Homeland Intervention and Espionage Division? They they changed it for the the for the film universe. You were close. It's enforcement and logistics division. Oh, enforcement division. Okay. Anyway, um, I hope next season is was just my as version good. a version from the comics. No, your the version from the comics uh, was strategic hazardous oh. uh, intervention espionage and logistics directorate. Oh, you missed the L. Logistics, <laughs> and then I think the the original one was like Supreme Headquarters International. Espionage Law Enforcement Division. Hmm. I think I got that right. Hmm. I might have got that wrong. 
Don't tweet at me, though, if I got it wrong <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So I think that does it for all the news, though. Yes. So are you ready to get into the main event? Yes. Wonder Woman versus Star. Are you ready for Wonder Woman to go down? I was about to say yes again. <laughs> no. All right. Let's Just, do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Wonder Woman versus Thor. So if this is your first time listening to us, uh, again, the, the way we do this is before we get into the battle or even, you know, get into the statistics, we, we like to give profile backgrounds on the characters and kind of break down their histories and, you know, what their power sets are just yeah. to give those who aren't familiar with the characters a little bit more information. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we speak speculate on how the fight would go it has no bearing really on how we no, calculate yeah. our, our stats or calculate the results or anything like that but it's just fun kind of conjecture on our part on how we think the battle would go so we yeah. talk about that and then and then we get into the the stat results yeah um and so, so what we do there is, is we basically run a thousand simulations and whoever wins the most out of those thousand battles is that's the person we declare the winner right right because you don't want to just run one simulation of it, which I think is what a lot of other people do. It's, it's, it's a thousand. And so no one wins like 100% of the time. It's always, you know, a a percentage. Um, so for our purposes, again, whoever wins a majority of those, we declare the winner. Yes. And, uh, just a disclaimer. If you hear a, there's like a chainsaw noise in the background. I don't know. (laughs) It's been going on the whole podcast. I don't know if it's being picked up in the microphone. But uh, just ignore that. Like my neighbor's like chopping down a tree or maybe... Or people. Or killing people or something. I don't know what he's doing with the chainsaw. But he's doing something with the chainsaw and it's annoying. But just just try to ignore it. Yeah, just ignore it. All right. Okay. So starting things off with Wonder Woman. Yeah. Tell us about Wonder Woman. Um, So right now, Wonder Woman's origin is sort of in a state of flux. I'm just going to get that out of the way (laughs) right away. And I really, honestly, I shouldn't say her origin. It's like she's always been the Amazon princess daughter of Queen Hippolyta. Hippolyta. Uh, Hippolyta. Hippolyta. Hippolyta of, uh, of Paradise Island, the Themyscira. But the source of her powers is what's in flux right now. And it's it's kind of political and maybe controversial, given that she's like both a feminist and LGBT icon now. Um, but in the past, it's like six, seven years. She's gone through two reboots, or I guess rebirths of sort. And I'm, I'm going to attempt to touch on both sides of her story, as I think like those that subscribe to one version of the character or the other have good and valid reasons for interpreting the character the way they do. And ultimately, I, I have no idea which version DC is going to ultimately settle with in the comics, if they even decide to. Or what version they're going to go with in the movie. Because usually the movie kind of puts in not like a... That's the definitive version. Well, yeah, that, that happened with Superman. Like, when they did the Richard Donner version, it kind of helped cement, like, what his power set was. Because in the comics, he had everything from, like, super ventriloquism to, <laughs> you know, just, like, these ridiculous powers. Yeah. And, I mean, they kind of picked that up again, you know, with, like, the super kiss, and I guess in Superman 2 with, you know, the whole, like, cellophane shield that he threw. But yeah. it did help cement his powers to an extent. Yeah. I think the Wonder Woman will definitely do the same thing because it's so mainstream. But, and I have speculation as to what they're going to settle on. We'll, we'll see ultimately when it comes out. Um, but comics-wise, quick background on the creation of the character. Wonder Woman was the creation of Dr. William Moulton Marston in 1941. And Dr. Marston drew inspiration for the character at that time from feminists of the day and his live-in like, bondage fetishizing mistress. She wore bracelets and that's where he got that from. Uh, Marston was a psychologist who you may know who was credited with the invention of the polygraph or lie detector test machine, which I always thought was a really cool aspect of the Wonder Woman character. The lasso of truth. Whole yeah, thing. the whole lasso yeah. of truth thing. And the inventor was the uh, polygraph uh, inventor. So uh, uh, Dr. Marston was a big proponent of the potential of comics as a medium, even before he started writing them. And he, he had this idea for a superhero that defeated evil with passivism and love rather than force. And his wife suggested that his character be a woman. It would be like the first woman superhero. He wanted this Wonder Woman to be strong, alluring female figure that was just as capable as Superman or Batman, but with the sense to use violence as a last resort. Like passivism was a huge, huge thing. So the Wonder Woman, 
Wonder Woman was always intended to be this like alternative hero, and she became this feminist icon later on, appearing on the front cover of the first issue of Gloria Steinman's Miss Magazine. And I think feminists, especially the ones who consider like man to be the worst thing that ever happened to women, are really attracted to not only this idea of a powerful female superhero, but also one that's like untouched, unfluenced, and at least story-wise, uncreated by man. Being that Diana, Wonder Woman, in the comics was was molded from clay by her mother. Uh, again, uh, Hi Hippolyta. And she was given life by the Greek gods. That's like when the trailer, when they say like, well, what about your father? And he's, she's like, well, I have no father. I think that's a really attractive idea to some people. Um, so the Amazons themselves were created the same way that Wonder Woman was originally created from clay. Um, depending on who's writing the story, either Aphrodite, Artemis, or Athena created the fully grown Amazon warrior race from the ground, from Gaia, Mother Nature herself. And it was mixed, they, they mixed the clay with the souls of the women who had died from the hands of men, like in, in history. Uh, they were these mythic defenders of mankind who were tricked into slavery by Hercules. Eventually, they were freed with the help of the gods, but they became disillusioned with living in man's world, and they escaped to a hidden island paradise known as Themyscira, to live peaceful, age to live as peaceful, ageless immortals, forever wearing the silver bracelets that they were shackled in as slaves, which served as a constant reminder of the dangers of men. But they were still women who longed for family and children. Hippolyta, the queen, especially. Uh, when, Dot, when Diana was brought to life from clay, she was the only child uh, Amazon to have ever existed, and all the women of Themyscira, uh, Themyscira essentially had a, a hand in raising her. Diana was trained in combat growing up, primarily by her aunt uh, Antiope. She's played by Robin Wright in, in the film. I think that's how you pronounce it. I always said Antiope in my head, but Antiope sounds more <laughs> I think it's Antiope. Um, and she was always warned about the world of man. Uh, with which she always had a fascination about growing up. Eventually, Diana came face to face with man when fighter pilot Steve Trevor crash landed on the Themyscirean shores. With their eternal, like, eternal grudge against men, Steve was unwelcomed on the island, but his sudden appearance was also seen as a sign, and it was decided that a contest would be held to find the bravest, the, the bravest most capable Amazon to leave Themyscira, return Steve back to man's world, and ultimately serve as their ambassador. Diana was actually forbidden from participating in the contest by her mom. She didn't want her to, but uh, she did it anyway in disguise. She won and was bestowed with the God-gifted artifacts like the Lasso of Truth, which was woven from, uh, woven from Gaia's golden girdle, and it compels anyone ensnared it to only express and perceive the truth, as well as her new silver bracelets that were forged from indestructible shields from, from Zeus. That that shield was known as the Aegis. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation either. I believe so. Now, that's how she got her crime-fighting equipment. But as we all know, Wonder Woman also has powers like super strength and flight. So initially, initially it was told that she got her powers when the Greek gods brought her, to, brought her infant clay form to life. But as of the New 52, which came out, I think, in 2011... It was revealed that Diana was actually conceived from a union between Zeus and Hippolyta, and therefore she got her strength from being a demigod like Hercules, which, as a fan of Greek mythology growing up, like that totally made sense to me. Well, did did they did they keep it a secret because they wanted to keep their their union from Hera? Yeah, yeah, she was. Uh, um, Hippolyta kept it a secret because everyone knows of Hera's wrath. You know, it's like the. In Greek mythology, Zeus was always having an aff uh, having affairs, and like you know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Hera was always punishing people, yeah, all the time in, in Greek mythology. So, I I just love that origin so much. Being it's, the daughter of Zeus, yeah, 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 it's cool. She's a demigod, uh, right? Exactly, like like Hercules. Um, it was also revealed that growing up, she was secretly trained in combat by Ares. Like not even her mom knew. Um, Ares saw within her the potential to be the greatest warrior to ever exist. Now, given the fact that Ares has always been depicted as Wonder Woman's like greatest supervillain, it it added this like really interesting relationship dynamic between these two characters that I also really liked. Mm -hmm. And she even took the mantle of the God of War, 
when she was forced to kill Ares, like later on in the story. Um, Wonder Woman's silver bracelets were now revealed as a gift from her father specifically for her, and they were now capable of channeling his lightning now that she was fully aware of her true connection to him. Channeling him how? Like, lightning punches, and she'd actually, like, wield thunderbolts, like, generate thunderbolts. She could shoot lightning from her bracelets? Um, she could, like, generate weaponry, like, like, like a, like a, like a lightning, like, spear. Okay. A thunderbolt. That's weird. I thought it was cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. Um... So uh, apparently the bracelets also served as par- uh, power dampeners to prevent her from going like into full god mode and like destroying anything she touches. That doesn't make sense. Uh, well, they like they, they were always seen as like the subjugation kind of element for the Amazons. You know, they were a symbol of their slavery. Yeah, but these so. aren't th- these aren't those same bracelets. You said they were made from the Zeus's Aegis armor. Right. Right. So it doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I always kind of that's, I, I, that's writer stupidity right there. No, I think that I think that's smart because like Superman always like ha- has to be like really careful like it, because he's so strong like it was like the slightest thing like picking and up a Wonder pencil Woman or can't do that. Well, no, but like it kind of gives like a better explanation for how she's able to control that much power. I thought, I think. Anyway, that makes it seem like Zeus would be depowered in his Aegis armor. N- no, it's. It's a symbol of subjugation. They're dampeners to prevent her from going on to, f- to full god mode. And, and, sh- and she's always been as strong as Superman, but she was suddenly capable of being like much more powerful if she removed her bracelets. It's how she was able to defeat, uh, in the comics, uh, Artemis that way. She was like, bitch, please, and then took off her bracelets and then beat the crap out of her because like, her eyes were glowing and it was like awesome. It was really cool. I was like, yeah. It's just writer stupidity. No. <laughs> so for the first time, Because of all these cool, interesting changes, I was buying Wonder Woman comics regularly. But there were a lot of people who didn't like these new character revelations. They didn't like the fact that she had a father, that she had interacted with a man, Ares, before the introduction of Steve Trevor. Honestly, like, a lot of people never liked Steve Trevor. If you were raised on an island of only women as a woman, you'd probably have a certain viewpoint when it comes to romantic relationships. So why would you fall in love with the first man you ever saw, a guy whose language you don't even speak? You know, I thought they spoke like all languages or something. The Amazons, uh, not in the new comics. They definitely there was a different language barrier when Steve showed up on the island. Okay. Um, there was also some like major controversy about how they retconned the Amazons. The New Fifty Two. They were no longer ageless immortals, but a race of warrior women who maintained their population by going on these rape slash murder sprees once a decade or something oh, like that. Shit. Yeah. Well, honestly, that didn't, like, bother me that much. It, it it bothered people who sort of, like, balk at the idea of a woman actually being able to rape a man. But um, as of rebirth, it's not even clear as to whether Diana is the daughter of Zeus. Apparently, she now received her powers after bringing Steve back to America and getting jailed at customs. She was visited in jail by the Greek goddesses in animal form who gave her her powers what? to help her cope in man's world. Um, those powers, of course, are super strength, super speed, flight, nine vulnerability. She's also, you know, uh, very proficient and very wise in when it comes to battle strategy. She, you know, was the she took up the mantle of goddess of war, god of war, uh, and she's been described as Batman as being the best melee fighter ever, which is pretty cool. What does that mean? She's the best melee fighter ever. What does that mean? She's she's the, like the, she's the best martial artist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. The best martial artist. Yeah, in DC Comics. Dumb. Uh, <laughs> Better than Lady heck? Shiva. Yeah. No, that's what Batman says. So without her strength, you think she would be able to beat Lady Shiva in a hand-to-hand fight? For a long... T- well, like, for a period of time, actually, when Miss Magazine first came out, uh, she didn't have her powers. She was just a martial artist. And Gloria Steinman actually, like, sort of protested against that, and so that's why she put Wonder Woman, like, in her old costume on the cover. And, like, there was this, like, essay about Wonder Woman and stuff like that. I, she could, She's capable enough to do that. To beat Lady Shiva. Well, she would be, like, a black canary without the canary cry. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Uh, in addition to, uh, to wearing her silver bracelets, which act as these indestructible reflective shields, she also carries a divine shield and sword. For fans of mythology and her parentage, she can also wield... Uh, in her Zeus parentage, 
She can also wield thunderbolts, like I mentioned earlier, which are capable of decimating mountains. And she, she again, can go into god mode that makes her just insanely strong. And by wielding thunderbolts, you mean holding lightning spears. Holding lightning bolts, yeah. But we don't even know if that's still one of her powers. It hasn't been said that it isn't yet. But has it been shown? Rebirth is, like, exactly one year old now, I think. So, I mean, there's, you know, it hasn't been shown yet, I don't think. I don't know, I haven't been reading it. It, just, it seems like, I don't know, it seems like a dumb power for her to have. She's had it for, like, the past seven years. Weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, yeah, if, if you're a fan of, of the mythology, that's cool. If if you're, you know, a pacifist, feminist, you know, a fan or fans of her creator's original interpretation, not as a warrior, but as an ambassador... Her greatest powers are probably her unwavering honor, grace, and commitment to peace. So what I'm trying to say in my own way is that she can totally wield Thor's hammer and will destroy him. Uh, No, she can't wield Thor's hammer. Oh, uh, excuse me. There is precedence in the comics for her wielding Thor's hammer. There is also precedence for her getting killed by Storm. Oh, shit. (laughs) That's dumb. (laughs) Storm uh, from the X-Men, I mean. Right, right. Yeah, so. this, this was all in the uh, the DC vs. Marvel, Marvel comic that they came out with in the 90s. Yeah. She picks up Thor's hammer, and then for some reason, she's like, I'm going to let this hammer go to fight Storm. And then for some reason, fan boats thought that Storm would beat Wonder Woman, which is total bullshit. But it happened. Total it ha- bullshit. It happened. Total bullshit. So if you want to <laughs> say that happened, I can say that happened. Uh, so. Dumb. Anyway. Uh, is that it for Wonder Woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you did kind of like a different profile than what we typically do. Typically, we like go through the character's history, but I, I like what you did there. But my my Thor profile is a little bit more traditional, I okay. guess. So yeah. th- th- let me go into his history. So so Thor Thor Odinson, god of thunder. He's the scion of Asgard, the puncher of the face of Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, oh. Usually I'm against violence against women, but in this case, I you know Wonder Woman can more than handle her own. So, uh, you know, even against someone as powerful as Thor. Uh, so Thor is the son of Odin, who is the all-father of the Asgardians, and he's the son of Gaia. Gaia? Gaia? Gaia. Gaia, who is Wait, the goddess of the Earth realm. But wasn't Gaia Greek? Yeah. Yeah. So they're both kind of like, in a way, children of Gaia. Oh, I Gaia. guess not anymore. Yeah. Anyway... They're, yeah. both, they're both like children of the the king of the gods for their pantheons. Basically. Um, like, well, in the movies, he's the son of Frigga. Yeah, that's right. But in the comics, um, he's the, he was raised by Frigga, but he's actually the biological son of Gaia because um, Odin wanted to have a kid who could draw upon the power of Asgard and Midgard. Hmm. But anyway... Um, so his earliest years are mostly lost to myth because there have actually been many Thors throughout history. You see, Th- Thor and the Asgardians are constantly reincarnated in the Ragnarok cycle of death and rebirth. Or, or rather, that used to be the case, but in, in this cycle in the Marvel Universe, when Odin casts Thor to Earth to live as a man uh, in a lesson in humility, it introduced a sort of like wild card element, the... Uh, no, like like the influence of mankind, kind of, as, mm-hmm. it, as it were. Uh, but many of the stories of Thor's life before his time as the mortal Donald Blake tell of a life full of adventure and heroism as he tried to become worthy of wielding Mjolnir. Um, Mjolnir is Thor's Uru hammer, and, and it's his primary weapon. Uh, Odin had put an enchantment on it that only lets those who are worthy um, be able to lift it. So during his pre- like Wonder Woman. No. So during his pre-Marvel time, <laughs> like he battled frost giants, uh, he thwarted his jealous brother Loki, he was the god of mischief, uh, he even visited Earth centuries ago and was worshipped by the Vikings. But in the comics, we first meet Thor as the mortal Dr. Donald Blake, uh, who was a physically handicapped physician who required a cane to walk. Odin transformed, the, right. and Odin, Odin transformed the arrogant Thor into Blake to teach him the, the lesson in humility. Um, but as Blake, he had no recollection of his true identity as the God of Thunder, nor did he have Mjolnir because Odin hid it away in a cave in Norway. Well, wasn't the staff Mjolnir? The cane? Uh, later he could... So, 
So he, he, while he was on vacation in Norway, he stumbled upon the hammer and regained his godly powers as Thor. Um, he chose to stay on Earth, having developed an affinity for Earth, and he had also fallen in love with his nurse named Jane Foster. How is he so, drawn to the cave? So, oh, uh, he just through mystical influence, kind of. Huh. Um, so whenever Thor wanted to transform into Donald Blake, he would strike Mjolnir's hand, handle on the ground, and it would transform into Donald Blake's walking cane, and he would become Donald Blake. And when he wanted to transform back into Thor, he would strike the walking cane on the ground, and it would turn into Mjolnir, and he'd become Thor. Mm-hmm. So uh, soon after he discovered, rediscovered his hammer and who he was, he helped found the Avengers alongside Iron Man, Ant-Man, Wasp, and Hulk. Uh, eventually, he abandoned his Donald Blake persona, and he and Jane Foster drifted apart. Uh, and he started dividing his time more between Earth and Asgard, where he would fight Asgardian villains like uh, the Enchantress and uh, Hela and Surtur. Um, so, during you know, jumping ahead like 30 years, basically, yeah. uh, during the appearance of Onslaught and the whole Heroes Reborn saga, oh, whoa. Uh, Odin transformed all of the Asgardians except for Thor into mortals to live on Earth in an effort to trick the world tree. I'm going to mispronounce it. Mispronounce this. Yggdrasil? Yggdrasil. Yeah. Yggdrasil? Yeah, yeah. Into thinking that Ragnarok had already taken place because it was coming up soon. Uh, Odin's plan being that one day Thor would restore them from their mortal flesh. Uh, problem was Thor wasn't in on the plan, having sacrificed himself to a pocket dimension while battling Onslaught. Uh, and eventually all the heroes that did that, they, they came back to Earth. They returned. Heroes reborn? He- yeah. Heroes returned. Oh. And, and Thor was pretty confused for a while because he didn't know where everybody was. But he eventually he was able to find his people and restore the Golden Realm. Um, a little later, after that, Odin fell in a battle against Surtur, the fire demon. And Thor became the new king of Asgard. Uh, reluctantly, I might, might add, he, he's never really seen himself as a ruler. Hmm. Uh, but during this time, he moved Asgard to the skies of New York City. But it was like considered a reckless move that kind of earned the contempt of Earth's citizens and, uh, and Thor's that. fellow superhero colleagues. He was kind of a dick, kind of at this point in his <laughs> history. But he eventually learned the error and arrogance of his ways and returned Asgard to its own realm. Um, with Odin still gone, Ragnarok, the fall of the gods, happened. This is my favorite Thor story. Um, Loki found the forge that was used to create Mjolnir and created super powerful weapons for all of Asgard's enemies. Weapons as oh, what a pa- dick. Yeah, weapons as powerful as Mjolnir that ended up smashing Thor's hammer to pieces. Um, Thor's friend Balder was killed, which that's when you know shit has really hit the fan because in mythology, Balder's death was the ultimate signal of the coming of Ragnarok. And eventually most of Thor's friends fell to Loki and his horde, including Hogan, Fandral, and Valkyrie. Um... Thor, in his search for wisdom, took out one of his eyes like his father did. Because in mythology, Odin That's... removed one of his eyes for wisdom. Right. Um, so Thor did that. He threw it like in a well, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, but, but a manifestation of the Odin force uh, told Thor that, you know, you, your father already did that. And for the answer on how to stop Ragnarok, you have to sacrifice more. Wait, can, so, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Can you explain the Odin force to me? What is that? It's just the godly force. It's 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 the source of their power, basically. Okay. The god force. Okay. Um, but it, Odin's is the most powerful, so um, it allows him to you know do all the powerful things that he can do. Anyway, so he, he, the Odin force told him that in order to get the answer on how to stop Ragnarok, he had to sacrifice more. So Thor took out his other eye. Ah. <laughs> uh. um, but still nothing. Uh, so he had to sacrifice even more, so he ended up hanging himself from Yggdrasil, the world tree, and he went to hell. Uh, oh, wait, a- Od- H- Odin did that in mythology. Hung himself? Yeah, he hung himself on a tree, sort of like in a Christ-like fashion. He sacrificed himself to himself. Anyway, some anyway mythology. So, Th- so Thor did it, and he, and he went to hell. H-E-L, not H-E, double hockey sticks. Right. Uh, hell is the Asgardian realm of the dead, and you go there no matter what. Um so there, Thor was reunited with Odin, where he learned it was his destiny to end the Asgardian cycle of death and rebirth, and uh, he was granted the full power of the Odin Force. Um, and with it, he straight up curb stomped Loki, and destroyed the Loom of the Fates, um, hmm. and the Yggdrasil Tree, essentially ending what? the cycle. 
um, ending all of the nine realms except for Earth and sending all the life in those realms to eternal slumber. Ah, oh, shit. I was going to say, because like, if you destroy Yggdrasil, aren't, like, isn't it like the, the anchor for all the realms? Yes. You're destroying yeah. all of existence. Yes, but they were all going to die anyway in Ragnarok. But the thing is that he no longer wanted to play the games of the the those who live above in shadow who basically feed off of their cycle of uh-huh. birth and death. So he's uh-huh. like, this time we're just going to stay dead. We're not dead, but eternal slumber kind of. Like, he was right. resting during right, this right. time. He was gone for a long time, like, for about three years. Um, eventually, Donald Blake, who it turns out was a real physician who was just a host for Thor's essence, summoned Thor back from the void with his walking cane. And Thor rebuilt Asgard and the Nine Realms uh, and eventually was able to bring back Odin. Um, oh, nice. Now, Odin's brother, Kull Borson, he was known as the Serpent, and he's the god of fear. Uh, he was freed at one point and made the claim that he was actually the rightful all-father of Asgard and that he was usurped and sealed away by Odin. Is this the same thing as the Midgard Serpent? No, he's not the Midgard Serpent. He's known as the Serpent. Okay, but, sorry. Um, Kull attacked Earth and, and spread fear across the planet, consuming the fear and becoming all-powerful. Uh, Thor was able to stop him but died in the process because it's a, like it's like a Norse... Uh, uh, prophecy, kind of part of the mythology that Thor dies in battle, battling the, the a serpent. Like uh-huh. it's the Midgard serpent, but they kind of retconned it in this to be the serpent. Was this the Fear itself storyline? Yes. Okay. Yep. Good one. Um, he was resurrected by Loki after that happened. Who, despite causing so much mischief for Thor, just does love his brother very deeply. And after the original Sin story arc, Thor learned that he had a sister named Angela, who was in fact an angel from heaven spelled (laughs) H-E-V-E-N, which was uh, the secret 10th realm. Uh, Angela actually comes from Image Comics and made her first appearance. I think she was in the Spawn uh, Comics. Created by Neil Gaiman, I think. For for Image? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that's uh, that's pretty much it for, you know, traditional Thor. At the end of the original story arc, he became unworthy to wield Mjolnir and now uses his old uh, battle axe Yarnborn. But uh, we all know he's going to get Mjolnir back one day. In fact, I think he's going to get it back soon. Pretty here. soon with with uh, Marvel Generations, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. So powers and abilities. Basically, you're screwed. Uh, he's, he's one of the strongest <laughs> heroes in the Marvel Universe and the physically strongest of all the Asgardians. And strong enough to hold pieces of the moon together and strong enough to lift the Midgard Serpent, who's about as big as the Earth. Uh, basically millions of tons. He's durable enough to survive blasts from Celestials and can withstand the heat at the center of the sun. He moves fast enough to block bullets and blasts using his hammer, and he can throw Mjolnir and fly at several times the speed of light. That's, okay, that's bullshit. You had me up until that, because like I'm like, yeah, Wonder Woman could do all that too, but he could throw Mjolnir faster, faster. Than, and he could fly faster than the speed of light? Well, yeah, he can fly as fast as he can throw Mjolnir, because that's how he flies, by throwing it and, and, and just holding, holding on. on to it. So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Um, that's dumb. Faster than this. I, I, yeah, that's, I've, no, never, I've never seen it. Yeah. I've never oh, seen it. Well, that's because you don't read a lot of Thor comics. No, yeah, I don't. It happens all the time. Uh, with Mjolnir, he can channel his ability uh, to control storms, which includes lightning, rain, wind, hail, thunder, all to like a vast extent. This means he can create hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards, tidal waves, etc., like on a planetary scale. Oh, oh, so his power is bad weather? Okay. And, and he can even create it in non-atmospheric locations, such as space. Um, he can even create volcanoes by striking the Earth hard enough to crack it open and release the magma inside. Um, when he spins Mjolnir, he can create portals for teleportation and impenetrable barriers for defense. Um, all of this power comes from a life force energy called the God Force, which I mentioned earlier. And when push comes to shove, he can channel, channel his God Force from his body or through Mjolnir for a blast so powerful that it can crack a Celestial's armor. It can damage Galactus and force him to flee. Um, it's called the God Blast. Though when he uses it, blast. it, when he uses it, it instantly renders him comatose for quite a while until he can restore his life force energies. Um, in addition to his power, he's a proficient hand-to-hand combatant and has an indomitable will. Indomitable will? Indomitable will. I guess that's a power. Yeah, it means he doesn't give up no matter what. Neither does Wonder Woman. Yeah, but does she have the God Blast? Uh, she can remove her bracelet. She can reflect the God Blast. She can reflect the Omega Beams. 
She can reflect the Omega Beams? Yeah. That's weird. That's stupid. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> basically, this is going to be a good fight. They're both... Insanely r- powerful. Insanely powerful. Um, Thor more so, so... No, no. Um, so, when it, when it comes to these battles... <clears throat> Uh, we take no stats for the environment. Right. It, like, obviously, environment plays a role in any battle like like this that takes place. Um, but since we don't take stats for the environment, the environment does not play a factor in these fights. Because it, 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 certain characters can win in one environment and not in another. And because environment is so variable, we, we just don't account for it in any way. Right. Um, so so. When, when we describe, when we you know speculate on how we think these fights would go, just imagine... No environment, like just just no place. Blank. Just like there's a floor and there's sky, and and it's and it's stre- stretches out to infinity. I, I suppose, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to think of it like they're fighting in. You remember the Matrix movie when they're or the like, loading room, the loading room. Yeah, that's where I think they're or fighting. the loading void. I don't know. It's not a room. I don't know. <laughs> so so yeah. So ha- how does this fight start? So usually they start about fifty yards apart. Yeah. In the non-environment place Uh uh-huh we'll call it the void should we come up with the name for it the void they fight in the void but it has a floor sure (laughs) okay sure that you can't see i guess i don't know um so yeah how does does, no not you you look a little nervous you look a little nervous you're like smiling the whole time i was going over thor's powers so i think you're a little nervous no no i i just find it humorous that you think that that's powerful compared to wonder woman because wonder woman could do all of that you're like, you have this notion that Thor is superior, but he's not. And especially when she removes her, her bracelets, which I'm sure this will get down to. She's going to... Yeah, she removes her bracelets, and guess what happens? What? That's when she gets blasted with the God Blast, and guess what happens? She can't reflect it, because guess what she did? She removed the bracelets. Okay, she's going to leave her bracelets on then. You just gave away your strategy, punk! All right. Um, <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, this... Fight starts off with, uh, you know, Wonder, Wonder Woman. She's a pacifist. She's in this unknown location, um, but she sees a man who, who she she's, perceives as a threat. She probably, you know, um, so she lo- uses her lasso right away, and then the fight is over because once he's ensnared, there's jack shit he can do. What he does is he spins, um, and basically he he like pulls her toward him, and she and as she's coming toward him. He, you know, he has, he's spinning with me like Mjolnir out, like at a, a 90 degree angle, and she smacks right into the hammer and goes flying. And the hammer, she lets go of the li- lasso and it loosens around him so that he can get out of the lasso. Well, no. No, no, no. Because when you're ensnared in the lasso, like your will is not your own. Um, and, you know. No, I've seen people trapped by the lasso who spin and get out of the lasso. I've seen it on multiple occasions. In the that's cartoons? What he does. Yeah. Uh. So that's what he does. Okay. Smacks her away. I was gonna have her like ask him like, "What's your weakness?" No, I don't, I don't no, know. Think yeah, no. it. He doesn't want to yeah. hurt her though, cause yeah. she's so, so beautiful. So, so he hits her. She gets knocked away. All right. And she's like, "Oh shit, that hurt." And then he's like, <laughs> "Have at thee!" And he 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 throws Mjolnir faster than she can block. No, okay. So she doesn't block it. She grabs it out of the air. Okay. He grabs it out of the air. Yeah. And then she goes to town on him pummeling the shit out of him okay but so she can hold Mjolnir yeah so then she can also be destroyed by lightning just like she did in Marvel vs DC no so then as no. she's holding Mjolnir he's calling down lightning upon her cause he doesn't need Mjolnir to, to control the lightning so uh-huh. and then she dies from the lightning and she's like won't give up but then he he's like sorry <laughs> sister this is all reference to the comic in case you're not catching on to that no she can't hold Mjolnir in this fight why? Because I said so. No, she, like she's like if anyone in the DC Comics universe can do it, like she can. Like she, she can't hold Mjolnir in this fight. Why? Because I said so. Um, how dare you, sir? She um, can't. She, she no, doesn't know that she can't hold it. Okay, okay. Why? So she's Why? holding Mjolnir, and then Thor picks up the lasso of truth that was at his feet, and he lassos Mjolnir and brings it back to him. <laughs> so uh, he has Mjolnir again. Okay. All right. Um, fucking cheap. No, but the lasso like recoils on its own, like back up to her. So and yeah, like, and he can call Mjolnir back to him when he wants it. Uh huh. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and then so and then he he twirls his hammer and then he calls down the wind of a thousand planets, 
and just it just pins her to the ground because it's so strong. No, because she's so strong and she could fly, so she just flies right through that wind and goes to town on him with her sword and shield, blocking any attack that he may no, come at her with. He's blocking her attacks with his hammer from her from her her from her sword. sword? Yeah. She has a much greater reach with her. It doesn't matter. He can still block it with it. She'll wrap him up in her lasso so that she can't fight how, back. How is and she, then, how she can use her lasso when she has a sword in one hand and a shield in the other? She has the. She the, has to sheath the sword or no, put the shield. So away. the thing is, she has like ultimate control on how this thing moves. So she could hold it in her her shield hand and still have the sword in her other hand. So she wraps him up and then beats the shit out of and him with her sword. And then he spins around again and then she flies into his hammer again. She didn't learn her lesson. No, no, that wouldn't. Now she has two black eyes. <laughs> And then and so he calls down a blizzard of, of just of pure l- colder than than absolute zero cold that freezes her. Does it hurt him? No. So what makes you think it's going to hurt her? Because he's directing it at her. Is he's not directing it at him? If it was directed at him, yeah, he'd get frozen. But he's directing it at her. She flies through it. She just flies right through right. it towards no, him and no, just she freezes. punches him right in the face. She freezes. She, she breaks through the ice. She can't fly through. She breaks everything. through the ice. Okay. And why well, can't she fly she's through? She's gonna everything. be frozen for at least a second. In order to break out of the ice, that means you have to be trapped in ice, right? Okay. So she's okay. frozen for at least a second. Okay. Guess what happens at that point? What? He fucking hits her in the face <laughs> with his hammer, and she is knocked out. Okay, so she goes flying, but then she she's, comes back. She's knocked out. No, she's not knocked out. She's, she's, she's in a coma. No, she's n- near instructable. You know how strong she is? You, you, you said know that, how strong Thor you is? You said that Thor could lift millions of tons? So can she. Okay, so she's not strong. Big, big deal. <laughs> so she goes... Uh, 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 you keep doing this thing where Thor keeps spinning around with the lasso. Yeah, yeah. and you keep trying to use the lasso. Yeah, well, like, yeah, she, she could grab the lasso... She could grab Mjolnir with her lasso. Lasso can't lift Mjolnir. Why? Because, because the lasso is not worthy. What? Ah, yes, it is. No, it's not. Uh, okay. Um, so while she's well, she he, he freezes her again, and then he hits the ground, and it opens up a fissure, and she falls onto the lava. She can fly. There's no environment, also. But she's trapped in ice. <laughs> she breaks out of the ice. Ice is not going to stop Wonder well, Woman. The when you can, when you can lift the ice. When, yeah, exactly. That's so dumb. Dumb. <laughs> when you could lift millions of tons, being frozen by ice is not going to be a problem to break out of. Okay. So she breaks out of the ice. She she flies away from the magma, and that's when Thor calls upon all the lightning striking from every no, direction. No, yeah. She pulls out her own lightning bolt too. Okay. And then she's attacking him, just beating him. Yeah. And with he's her like, he's bolt. like absorbing her lightning bolt with his hammer and oh, directing oh, it back okay, at her. Okay. Okay. So if he could absorb lightning with his hammer, then she could absorb his lightning with her, with her gauntlets and reflect it no, back. But she can only do one lightning bolt at a time. She can't like call it on from all sides. Like Thor can. He's like lightning, like from every direction. And she can't stop all of that with her with bracelets. She, she can't be omnidirectional with her bracelets because they're just two bracelets. No, she's that good. No. Yeah. No. Nah. Absolutely. Then that's gonna. You know what? If she's that good, she's gonna spend all of her time just trying to block these lightning bolts coming from every direction. She's gonna leave herself vulnerable to a hit in the face with a fist, which she also blocks. Which it doesn't make any sense because if she's blocking everything on all sides, why she not? She can block fist? all the lightning and his fist. Okay, she may not be able to block all the lightning. But she so she's gonna get lightning blasted. But it's not. So be, you're admitting she, she's, she's a daughter of Zeus. She's a daughter of Zeus. If she gets hit by enough, enough lightning, it's gonna weaken her. If he gets hit by enough of her fists, it's, it's gonna weaken him. But <laughs> how is he even? How is she even gonna hit him? She's an expert. She's a way better fighter than he is. If she manages to get around Mjolnir and it comes onto like hand to hand, I can see like that going her way. Like her. She like, can get past Mjolnir before he can get past her bracelets. I guarantee you that. She's a way better fighter you know, when he spins and it, she's way more defensive it's, it's with like her a, bracelets. It's like a big shield when he spins it. And that's only one and direction too. He, he could blow her back. But I mean, it covers enough air. Wind is not gonna it hurt, weather is not gonna hurt her. This is a strong wind, man. Oh, oh it's oh, bad weather, okay. It's, it's not just bad weather, it's, it's the wind of a thousand planets. It's That's powerful. It's a powerful force. She could reflect anything that comes at her too. Even wind. Oh, anything. I don't think so, man. She, I don't anything. Think so, man. 
She could reflect anything. You never explained how she gets out of getting punched in the face after she's blocking all those lightning bolts coming at her from every angle. At the speed of light or electricity, may, might I add. She might take a few punches in this. I'm not like trying to block every punch, but I know she can take it because she's that durable. She's like, she's Superman, you know? It's, and Thor's Thor. Yeah, but, but you know, she, okay, there's, she can block anything that Thor can dish, but she also is incredibly offensive as well with with her sword, with all of her weapons. She hasn't yet to go on the offensive, man. Except I've been maybe, trying. Maybe with her sword I've been and shield. I know it's you can't really come hard with... because because I keep bl blitzing you, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what Thor's gonna do. A blitz. I, I feel like she's gonna be put on the defensive this whole time because Thor has so many so many more. He has a bigger bag of tricks, basically. No, 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 no way. If she's on the defensive, that's, you know, that's when she has tools like the lasso. Like, she has, she can use her, her tiara as a boomerang, you know? She's not never sure of any kind of, like, bag of tricks or, you know, anything like that. What is the tiara going to do? What's it made out of? It's just going to bounce off of Thor. It's di just, you know, divine, just divine boomerang weapon kind of thing. Can it cut through Mjolnir? It can't cut through Mjolnir. But I, I, her sword could cut him. I'm is she sure. Yeah, okay, it, her sword could cut him. Her tiara can her probably. Her sword could cut Superman. Cut. Well, that's because Superman's weak to magic. He just has no defense against if magic. If anything, I didn't want to mention this, but Thor is not weak to magic. If anything, he can negate other people's magic abilities, just like he did to Juggernaut, who wields the crimson bands of Sidorak, not unlike the silver bracelets. No, they're nothing alike. He was able to negate those so that. Um, uh, Juggernaut was not able to defend against his attacks. Well, uh, what's the difference between mythic, something that's mythically powered and something that's magically powered? Is the Aegis magically powered? No. Yeah. No. It's the same thing in comics, man. No, it's not. Pretty sure it is. No, there's like sorcery and then there's, you know, just like God power. You know, Wonder Woman's bracelets and all of her weaponry are like God powered, you know? If you say so, man. You, you, see, you, you keep blitzing her. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 she she's gonna find a way because she's a clever strategist. Okay. I'm not a clever strategist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of something, but I, she can use her lasso to like grab his feet and then like pull him up and just yank him up and like he's disoriented and then that's when she goes in for her move. You know, she you know bashes him and just pummels him with her sword. She's cutting the shit out of him, dude. So his, you're saying his foot is trapped by the lasso? Yes. That's when he creates a portal oh my with his Thor, gosh. and he teleports away from the lasso. Or he teleports her into the portal and then leaves her in a different dimension while he comes back. I'm pretty sure in a few episodes ago you said that teleporting someone away from a battle is the same as running away. You yeah, but he that. punches her in the face as he does it. <laughs> That's true. There's no fleeing. There's no fleeing the environment. Right. But he can still do it, though. Okay, so all this is going down. I said she wasn't going to remove her bracelets. But guess what, dude? Guess what? She, uh, she already lifts millions of tons without the bracelets. So, or with the bracelets, so without Wait, them. Let me know when she removes the, the, the bracelets. Let me know when. Okay, right now. Oh, God blast. <laughs> guess what? She's dead. No, because she's so insanely powerful. She's like, uh. She's not more powerful than Galactus. She's not more powerful than a Celestial. She's in, okay, she's already more, okay. way crazy. She's like as strong as Thor with the bracelets on. So let's say she is as powerful as Galactus with her bracelets off. Guess what he did to Galactus? What? Made him flee in order to save his life. With the God Blast. Yeah, fine, she keeps her bracelets on. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling, okay, whoever loses this fight there's going to be some butt hurt involved, no matter what. <laughs> There's going to be some broken hearts. If I lose it or if you lose it. And yeah, I'm going on the offensive and blitzing you and you're having a hard time struggling struggling against the awesome might that is Thor. But we still don't know how the, the stats are going to go. Right. Honestly, for as, as, as hard as, as he may hit Wonder Woman, it's going to take a really long she, time she could give for it just either a, of them to She could give it just as good as he's giving. You know? Yeah. Oh, you took that to a dirty... I wasn't like that at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's going to take a long time for either of these guys to win, basically. They're I, both very durable. Here's the thing. Again, 
she can block anything that he throws at her. And she has some extra offensive capability that he has no defense against. If he's busy trying to bash her with his hammer, it's going to bounce off her shield and she's going to be cutting the shit out of him with her sword or having him ensnared with her, with her lasso. The thing is, it doesn't bounce off a shield. It returns to him. He has like telekinesis over it. it does, it's not like any oh, other- Oh, I'm th- saying it's still in it, his hand because this is close quarters combat. Oh, oh. And she's a superior martial artist It wouldn't artist bounce off her shield. It would like slap into her shield and, and you know, the shield would bear the force of it, but it wouldn't bounce. It would bounce off her bracelets, because those reflect anything. Okay. Yeah, he hits her, she blocks with her bracelet, and the force of the, the, the his swing makes Mjolnir just like fly off into like the horizon. And then he's effed. Can she drown? Drown? Yes. Uh, cause he, he she could hold her breath for a really long time. Like I've seen her go into space and to Atlantis. It depends, on, it depends on the artist, on it. What honestly. if Thor summons a rainstorm that is so heavy that she's not able to breathe? Well, where is he during this? Is he underwater too? No, it's just a, it's like a personal rain cloud for her. It's, she, she's in close quarters combat, and then he's gonna get affected by it as well. Unless she's making out with him, it's not gonna be the case. Her face <laughs> is in a different location. So he could direct it to like centimeters? Yeah, he has complete control over the storm. She has complete control over warriors. As the god of what? war, yeah, as the god of war, that was her power. She, a- anyone, any like soldier in her vicinity, she could like mentally command. He is a warrior. But she's, she's a not Norse the god warrior. of war right here. She's the god of goddess of war. She's not the goddess of war right here. Why not? Why not? Well, okay, then Odin, then Thor has the Odin force. Oh, well, then she takes off her bracelets and she's a huge badass. What? So he Come has the Odin Force, and he, that means he has like infinite god blasts, and he probably won't go comatose uh, with, by, he has with Odin with the full power of the Odin Force, he had the power to create recreate all the nine realms. It's it's way too powerful for her. <laughs> that's, that's, oh oh, he created some realms. Yeah, that's gonna hurt her. No, I'm just saying how the extent of his power is very powerful. You you can't say like oh this is oh oh I forgot to mention this is goddess of war Wonder Woman not just normal. And I'm Wonder saying Woman. she controls him. She doesn't control him. She he is a soldier and she controls all well, soldiers. You're reaching. People are gonna disrespect you <laughs> for reaching so far. She can decimate mountains with her bracelets on. With okay, them yeah, off. Yeah. So I, 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 I seriously don't, there's nothing. She's like as powerful as Zeus. I mean. Yeah, as powerful it, as a celestial, as powerful as Galactus. Uh, can Thor defeat Odin? Um, that's a good question. I mean, if he used all of his god blast, I don't know. That's a good question. Because you know, like Odin's, Odin, you know, he was like defeated by Surtur and everything like that. You know. Yeah. He's not. Is this Thor more powerful than Odin? No. Well, he's str- physically stronger. So I, I don't think one of more powerful than Zeus, but she could become as powerful as him. With her bracelets off. I, I think w- w- if he summons all of his godly energy to blast Odin with the god blast, it would be it would absolutely be enough to knock Odin out. But you know, Thor would knock himself out too. But and vice versa too. Oh, if Odin did that to him. Yeah. This is going nowhere. <laughs> let's let's take it to the stat. Right, we're gonna take it to the stat machine, folks. We'll, we'll be we'll run a thousand simulations and be right back. Let the butt hurt begin. <laughs> Now that sound could be applied to either one. <laughs> so I I don't know. You yeah. think the machine is giving a hint that no. Thor is gonna win this one. No I hints think. from the No, it could be applied to Wonder Woman as well. <laughs> Alright. Um well you got the results here from the machine. Um after putting in all the stats. They kinda went tit for tat. Like Wonder Woman was better at a couple things than Thor. She was uh, better. Thor was better at a couple. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, she was just a better fighter. She's a better <coughs> fighter, and she's smarter. Basically, traditionally depicted as smarter than Thor. Yeah. Um, Thor definitely, uh, I think, is faster. He's faster and stronger. Stronger? I thought well, they were no, the same strength. N- not necessarily strong. He's it's uh, his damage level is yeah. greater. He's able able to do cause more damage <coughs> in the shorter time span, basically. Yeah. Than Wonder Woman. Um, 
So, and, and a lot of things actually they tied on, such as like strength um, and like range and things like that. Durability, I think they're about the same. So it, it, it was a tough one. It, it, it's, it's fairly close. Um, are you ready for the butt hurt? <laughs> uh, no. I'm, it's, this is like one of those matches where it's like, let's just talk about it and not look I at the results. I still want to know the results. I mean, this is... You have, like, this is one of the Trinity. Like, this is, <laughs> like, I was super upset, like, when Superman lost to Doomsday. Oh, I guess Doctor that's a Doom. spoiler. Or Doctor, uh, Doom. Doctor Doom, I meant. He lost um, to Doomsday, too. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I don't almost want, especially with, like, all the goodwill that Wonder Woman is, is having right now. Like, I don't want her to lose. <laughs> um, and I'm not convinced either way, like, whether, just, I mean... With all the stats. So, just rip the band-aid, dude. You want to know? Just all right. do it. Okay. And th- this is, you know, this is for all the money. This is, this cements this status in stone. For So, when everybody asks you who would win in a b- fight between Wonder Woman and Thor, you right. look at them straight in the eye, and you say, Wonder Woman. Fuck yeah! Yes! Fuck you! <laughs> yeah! No! Get away from me! I'll go away No! It's no! Real. No! Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. All right, that's awesome. Do you think this means anything? Yes. Yes, I want to get the shit out of you in real life. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Come at me. Uh. So what, dude? Wonder, Wonder Woman. I didn't. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It was very close to um, the last uh, dual episodes results. Uh, she won fifty nine point three percent of the matches. Nice. Nice. So it's still a close match. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, man, Marvel's just been taking a pounding th- these past few months. I feel well, like spoiler alert. Yeah. I want to. I want to rerun all of these simulations again. Another, I'm sure you've done that. Another thousand matches is what I want to do. But you know, can't can't win them all. I guess it's, I think it's just a. There's just, some just a string some, of bad luck. There's gonna be some really ba- like s- angry, angry <laughs> Thor fans out there. Yeah. Um. Th- yeah, because a lot of people I feel like know more Marvel characters more than DC, uh, just because of like you know the market. But yeah, you know, Wonder Woman's you know there's in terms of like feats of strength, she's done equal amount to Thor yeah. in terms of strength what, and everything. What so. the stats seem to imply is that, like, I put you on the defensive in our, in our speculation right. so much that you didn't really get to show off Wonder Woman's hand-to-hand prowess. Well, I kept trying to do that, and you're like, oh, no, he just <laughs> does this. But <laughs> according to the stats, that, that played a bigger role in this than than uh, than our little simulation thing seemed to suggest. Our speculation, yeah. Yeah, our speculation. So, uh, yeah, her her hand to hand combat ability with her her and her weapons and everything like that does does play. You, you just kind of sucked at the whole <laughs> our whole speculation. So. I kept trying <laughs> to get in close. Yeah, you didn't do her justice apparently because. But like uh, throwing a, saying that she's throwing a punch isn't as impressive as as you saying like oh he summons this the planetary wind or some <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. So. In that regard, Thor really is still the best. That's what I choose to take away from all this. Um, I, I, wait, what? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Wonder Woman's the, the victor here. Because I did so well in the speculation. She earned this. She earned this. This is awesome. Is it, though? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Her mo- her, this means her movie's going to do really well in the box office. I hope her movie fails now. <laughs> Gal Gadot can beat Chris Chris Hemsworth. That's that's what this means. And I guess so. yeah, I think I think that's real. Anyway, this 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 podcast is dumb. <laughs> I want to go listen to a different one. <laughs> All right, this is awesome. <laughs> but holy crap! Anyway, I was like really nervous. Well, now you'll be even happier going into the movie. Wonder Woman that comes out in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's yeah. the movie that we're going to be reviewing. That's in, our next episode. In our next episode, yeah. which will be in two weeks. I think it's. I think it's going to do better than what people have been saying it's going to do. Um, I will be surprised I, if it bre- if it breaks a hundred domestically in its opening um, weekend. Yeah, I, I would. I would be surprised too. But some people are saying like sixty five. I think it's going to do a lot better than that. I think it's going to do like 80, 90. i I'm going to guess seventy. I'm going to say eighty ninety. 
I, I, I mean, above seventy. Actually, honestly, I think one of the reasons it's I think it'll do well globally too is I, I recently learned the the name of the movie like in in Latin markets and Spanish markets. Do you know what it is? No. Uh, Mujer, what is it? Mujer Marvelosa. Uh huh. Marvelous woman. Or Marvel. Marvalia or something, something with like Marvel. Oh, so I think there might be some confusion. They there. do that on purpose to try to. No, I just, I just I just don't think there's a word for Marvel in or, for, the, or, wonder? or wonder. Yeah, I think that's the word for. There is. For this isn't like Wondroso or something like that. I may or, just completely <laughs> made that up. <laughs> I, or maybe yeah, maybe it's the alliteration. I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, that does it for this episode. The yeah. hint for the trivia question. Uh, which was, in 1984, DC offered to sell Marvel the publishing rights to all of DC's characters, what ultimately caused Marvel to back away from DC's deal. Um, And the hint is, the reason Marvel ultimately backed away from the deal has nothing to do with the quality of DC's characters. So if you Google it, that's probably going to be the first thing you you read about. And that's You've got to go a little bit deeper than that. Go deeper. Um, So again, you can uh, write into us. Uh, through email, dynamicdualpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram, dynamicdualpodcast. You can find us on Twitter, at dynamicdual, dynamic underscore dual. Yeah. You can find us on Facebook by searching for dynamicdual colon DC vs. Marvel. Yeah. Um, where else can they find us? Uh, we have a Pinterest uh, page. Honestly, you can find us on Pinterest. You can find us on Google Plus now. Uh, I yeah. mean, we're kind of everywhere. Yeah, you just, you know, just do a search. Cool. Yeah. Find us. Um, you can uh, also but leave... keep your death threats to yourself. Because <laughs> um, I know you're upset about throat losing. So. <laughs> you can also reach out to us on SoundCloud, which is where we host these audio files. Right. We, uh, if you have a SoundCloud account, definitely check us out because that's where we post all of the album artwork. Yeah, if you listen to us on episodes. iTunes, go ahead and give us a review. Oh, yes, please. Unless you're really upset right now that Thor just lost, (laughs) then just wait a few weeks, listen to maybe a few more episodes before you make any judgments. Um, (laughs) And then write us a review. Right, yeah. Hopefully. Um, Unless you hate us. All right. (laughs) We will uh, see you guys in two weeks. Yes. Wonder Woman. Yeah, it's going to be the longest two weeks. Check your expectations. No. No. See you guys in two weeks. Up, up, and away. True believers.